Captain. Wake up, Captain. What? I'm sorry to disturb you, but. What is it, Lieutenant? This just came in. What's this? Stop cell? MDPS? Um, I gotta go. Get command on the line immediately. Welcome back to Shop Former Garage. Working today with War Car Auto Group and we are working on this 2024 Kia Sportage. 2024? Yeah, it's got eight miles on it. So why, why we have to work on a 2024? It's broken already? Well, it had a stop sale. We got a stop sale. We got a stop sale. It's a stop sale. What's a stop sale? A stop sale is when there's an issue with a vehicle that could be considered dangerous, dangerous enough that um, it needs to be repaired before it can be sold. So it's a stop sale, no selling this vehicle until it is actually repaired. And today we are uh, going to replace the MDPS. What's an MDPS? That stands for Motor Driven Power Steering and it has a motor that drives your power steering and in this case the supplier when building this motor assembly used uh, contaminated flux which could cause a short in the printed circuit and that short could cause this motor to stop turning and you could lose power steering uh, your steering is still going to work but it's not going to have any power and because of that it could result in a crash so we are going to drop the steering column in this 2024 Kia Sportage with eight miles on it and we're gonna be replacing this and it's not that bad of a job and let's get right into it. All right, let's look and see what we're dealing with here. Let's move the seat back. So, of course, here's the steering wheel, steering column and the motor for the steering column is right up in here it's way up in there on the top so we got to get all this stuff out of the way and um, let's just uh, start tearing into it right now all right the first thing I need to do is pull the seaming welt out or at least just pull it back and this threshold plate Pull that out. These, uh, this um, hood switch, these don't have uh, bolts in them. So you just kind of slowly kind of pull them out like that and then they just pop out just like that. And of course this thing has some clips. So I'm gonna have to pull the clips on this. But uh, first I need to make sure that I disconnect the battery. Okay, I disconnected the battery. Um, it is a good idea to disconnect the battery, you know, with most uh, repairs. But in this case, uh, we're dealing with uh, airbag harnesses and stuff like that. So we definitely want to disconnect the battery and let it sit a while before we start disconnecting the airbag connectors. Uh, so uh, I need to pull this off and I'm just gonna use this clip tool to kind of pop it out. Just like that because we got to pull this panel off so I need to take this right here and of course you know it's a brand new vehicle we want to definitely you know we'll always be careful not to mar up the plastic you know sometimes it can't be helped but you know this vehicle does not even belong to anybody yet somebody's gonna buy it one day so we want to make sure that when they first look at it it's not gonna have you know marks and stuff on it you got a screw right there 
And we got one right there. And then we're just gonna pull this off the side, pull it back like that. And this one down here, just gonna grab it, pull it off just like that. And we got the data link connector right here. And I need a screwdriver. Take this off. Come on, can I get it with one hand? There it is. Other side. All right. Push this out of the way. Okay, so now what are we looking at? Um, we need to take the um, steering shells off, is what I call it. It's the trim for the steering column. So I'm going to stick a screwdriver in here, pop that up just a little bit. I can get it to come up yeah oops just like that and of course this thing is attached we could take this off but it is a real pain to get off and to get back on so we're just gonna leave that there for now and we're gonna try and figure out how we can hang the thing up so it's out of the way later on there is one screw right here on the bottom and then on the top right here there's one screw right here, and then there's another one on the other side. So I'm gonna get those off. First, this bottom one. And the one on the side right here. And then there is another one right there. So let me get that out. All right, and then this thing just kind of grab it and pull it down and it should come come right down just like that so I'm gonna take the screws that came out of it there's two of them I'm already losing screws I'll stick them in there there move that aside and now what do we got? Got a couple connectors here. This right here is airbag connector. This yellow one. Uh, let me get this one off. This is all other accessories going through the clock spring. It's the airbag. And this one is your multifunction switch. So that's everything there. I need to get this connector right here get that off let that hang down and in this case in this one we're going to have to remove the brake pedal so that makes it kind of a pain and I'll show you why uh, this um, knee or uh, foot air vent AC vent on the bottom here um, needs to come out because that's in the way if we drop the column with that there it's gonna break so we got one screw right here and the thing should just pull out like that and Let me see. Let's 
put this aside. I got the brake switch. Need to disconnect the brake switch. We're gonna be pulling the pedal out. We're not gonna completely pull that out. We gotta loosen it and take the thing off. Um, so here's the clip that holds the brake pedal. I just pull that out like that. Pull this this thing out too. So now the brake switch is uh, separated from the the rod that goes to the brake booster. And we got four of these nuts all around and then way up inside there, way up back there. Not sure if you can see it, there's a nut. Oh, uh, on a stud up there holding the bracket on. And the reason why we have to do this is, let's see if I can even see it. There's a, a bolt, there's a cross bolt right there. That bolt comes out and it's gonna hit the, the brake bracket and it's not gonna come out all the way. This cross bolt needs to come out in order for this column right here to come down. So, let me get these uh, four nuts out right here and that one up, up there and we can drop the thing. All right, we got these four. Don't want to lose them. And I'm going to get this one up on top here. First, okay, and then there's one more right here, and it's loose, I'm not taking it completely out. It's actually being held by the wiring harness up here, but I just needed to come loose because I need to get that. Uh, that cross bolt out. Well, actually, it'd probably be easier if I just take this out. So, let's just do that. There is a wiring harness tethered to it right here. out and where is it? Right here is that nut. So I'm gonna take that out. Where is it? I can't see it. Okay. That's it. Oh. That's coming out. There it is. And see, it's too long. It would definitely hit the, the brake pedal bracket or whatever. So, I got that out. Now, got this nut right up in here and then one over here let's put the steering column back 
And then let's get these two out. And wait a second, I'm forgetting one thing. So first we need to get the um, wiring harness off of the uh, MDPS first. And that's way underneath there. So we need to, um, need to lie down on the floor and uh, look way up in there. And there's uh, like three connectors we need to take off. So we need to make sure that we take those off first because otherwise we'll be pulling uh, connectors out uh, whenever we drop the column. And that would not be good. So uh, let me get this out of the way and let's see if we can get our heads up in there and look at those connectors. Okay, so way up here underneath the dash, that's the top of the MD MDPS. Um, and these are the connectors. We gotta pull these back and disconnect them. It's got these little tabs on them. And we got another one right here. We need to pull back. Push on that to pull it out. Let's get this one out of the way first. Pull that back, push on that, pull that out. And then hopefully we get this one. There it is. So we got those three. And we need to get this thing right here loose. We need to get that out of there. So let's see. If I can push on this tab. tool and I'll get that out okay I got this one bolt or one nut up in here holding the whole thing on so get that out of there come on I gotta hold the thing up with my hand and get that nut out and then it's just gonna come right down Pull it right out, set it down. So this is what it looks like. And the thing rotates like that. This right here, I have to watch out for this shaft. If you pull on this thing, it will come all the way out. And then good luck trying to get it back in. And um, you can take this off. That's what Kia wants you to do. You gotta take this cross bolt out, pull this thing out. Then you gotta make sure you get it right back in the same exact spot. Um, and one thing that can happen whenever you do that, if this steering wheel just starts spinning on here, it'll break, break the clock spring in there and then you gotta replace the clock spring. So you gotta be really careful. If you leave it on here like this, you don't have to worry about replacing the clock spring. You don't have to worry about getting that right back in the same spot. Just make sure that this doesn't come loose. And this is what we're after. And we can turn the thing like this and see how the column turns, but the steering wheel's not turning. So it's got these two bolts right here and it's got one back there that we need to take off. And then that's the motor out. And then we just put the new motor in and put everything back together. So let's get this motor out of here. Okay, we got one bolt, bolt back here. Pull that one out first, and then these two. And then that is it. And there's your MDPS. Motor driven power steering motor assembly. And uh, this thing turns and turns the, the shaft inside there. And uh, if you, you can see this, whenever this thing turns, you can see that, that wheel in there turning. So I me mean, turning this thing, it's turning that wheel. This motor turns that wheel, which turns the, the steering shaft. So, Let's get the new motor. And 
there it is in here. This box. Get this opened up here. And there's a brand new one. Now this, uh, there is a little O-ring or spacer. I don't know what it is. Got to make sure that is put in there. So let's get this one in. Get this one out of the way. And so these little notches right here have to line up with those. So it's not too hard to do that. I'm just gonna just kind of stick the thing in place, kind of turn it, and it actually went right into place. Sometimes if it doesn't, you just stick it in there and very lightly and start moving this back and forth, then it'll fall right into place. So get this bolted back up. And then what we want to do is torque it down to the proper spec. And uh, of course I need to at least run one of these down all the way so it doesn't pop out. And then I'll accidentally tighten it down with those notches not lined up and that would be bad. Uh, that would force the thing in there and it could do damage to the steering column. It could do damage to the brand new motor that we're putting in. So uh, I am going to just lightly tighten these down. And then I'll do the other one on the other side and I'll grab a torque wrench. Now this is my inch pound torque wrench. It's pretty old, I've had it for a while. But I know that it's in good calibration. And um, I always take really good care of my torque wrenches. They come out, I set them, use them, zero it out, clean it off, put it back right into the case, right back right into the toolbox. It never sits out on the workbench and it's always zero it out after use, right away always zero out your torque wrenches otherwise it can keep pressure on the inside and it will go out of calibration so always zero it out now this is an inch pound torque wrench and we need to um, torque that down to 16 foot pounds all right so i have an inch pound uh, scale right here so how am i going to put 16 foot pounds well it's also 22 newton meters and this has a newton meter scale right here so i'm going to set this to 22 newton meters and we will torque it down like that so a lot of people think well i guess they think that you torque uh, a um, something down to spec so that it's tight enough and that's of course true you know, you want it to be tight enough, but too tight can also be bad. And this is uh, definitely one of those situations that uh, you want it to not be too tight because tightening that thing down too tight, it's not gonna be able to turn properly and you could have issues. And it's the same way with uh, torquing down uh, an axle nut at the end of the axle. You know, some people are like, well, I can tighten this thing down tight and I'll just hit my you know, impact wrench on it. Well, it's not that just that it's tight enough but it could be too tight and if you put it too tight then the preload on the bearing on the inside is too tight and the bearing will actually wear out so um, just because you uh, tighten it down uh, with a torque wrench does not mean that uh, you're doing it uh, just to get it tight enough it's also so that it's not too tight so we want 22 newton meters so that's 22.25, gotta bring it down, 22, right there, 22 newton meters. So let's get this torqued. Uh, there's another thing I wanna mention about torquing um, nuts and bolts and stuff down. If you use a torque wrench with a extension 
and a, in this case, a wobble socket. Um, each thing added onto it can change the torque that's used to torque this thing down, especially if you're going at an angle with this thing right here. So in, in this case, I mean, we really can't get the thing in there unless we use something like this. So we just do the best we can. And um, it's, it's better than just, you know, tightening the thing down and, and being done with it. So let's torque this thing down. Okay, let me get this in here. And 22 newton meters is not that much. 16 foot pounds. And there it moved a little bit. And I just try and keep the thing as straight as possible. Okay, that's good. Okay, I, I taped this piece up here with a piece of masking tape, just try and keep it out of the way because it really does get in the way whenever I'm trying to put this thing back in. What I need to do is get this piece right here up into that hole and that'll help hold it in so I, I can shove the thing up and up where it belongs and uh, get the, um, the nuts put on to hold it in and then get the cross bolt in and then uh, we can put the brake pedal in uh, make sure we hook up our uh, connectors to this thing right here and uh, just start putting everything back together so I'm just gonna start putting the thing together
Okay, we got the whole thing put in, we got the motor put in place and everything like that, but we're not completely done. I have the vehicle running and uh, if you can see, there's a bunch of lights on, on the dashboard. You got a bunch of uh, uh, different uh, messages popping up for uh, traction control and blind spot detection and, and there's just a bunch of stuff including the steering and uh, that is because it has not been calibrated and we also disconnected a bunch of stuff, disconnected the, the um, brake switch um, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the vehicle off and I'll just turn the key on and we're going to go into this motor driven power steering system right here and we got to set the regional settings the uh, EPS type recognition and uh, because uh, settings for steering are believe it or not different depending on the regions that you live um, don't ask me how I have no idea how that makes any difference you know turning a wheel should turn a certain way you know whether yeah uh, I don't know whether you're in um, you know, Canada or Africa, you know, I mean, I, I have no idea. Uh, but uh, it's something that we need to do. So uh, load the accurate settings, hit OK. Um, and that is the accurate setting right there. So hit OK and turn the ignition off for 20 seconds. And um, this uh, Letting the thing sit for 20 seconds and then uh, um, turning the key back on, that sets the uh, whatever spec that you put into it, that lets it finally set in. So we're going to do that and then we also have to uh, calibrate the uh, steering uh, angle sensor, steering angle torque sensor. So I'm going to hit the key back on. I will hit OK right here. Okay, and then we're going into the steering angle sensor calibration. And it's just uh, basically uh, set, setting the steering angle sensor to zero uh, so that it knows. So it, it knows what, you know, where the steering wheel is at. And that's better for uh, traction control and stuff. You know, if you're uh, driving down the highway straight and it thinks that your steering wheel is turned to the left because it's not calibrated properly um, then it would be thinking you're going way too fast to be making a left hand turn so it starts engaging the traction control and stuff like that because it thinks you're out of control so that's why we want to uh, get the calibration set on the steering angle sensor so I got the ignition on engine stopped uh, press OK to perform the calibration are you sure yes Ignition on, engine stop, now initializing. And uh, I had to make sure that the uh, steering wheel was straight and it is sitting straight. So I gotta turn the key off and wait for 10 seconds so that it can do its, uh, do its thing, you know. And um, after that, then we can uh, just clear all the codes and then everything should be fine. Um, and then we will check and make sure that the steering wheel is good. I'd like to take the thing on the road and see how she performs, but I ain't got no gas. So um, as long as uh, it, it, the steering wheel feels fine, we can drive around in the parking lot and everything's good, then uh, we're good to go and no code setting or anything like that. I'm going to turn the key back on, hit OK. And uh, right now you can see, well, now that the thing is still blinking, right, the steering. So we need to clear all the codes that got set in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an all, all systems code check. I'm going to check all the codes. This is going to take a little while. So hit OK. Okay, so it's done. 
go in there are no current codes i can look at history codes and there's a bunch of um, error codes and stuff like that that were set uh, during the calibration so i'm gonna erase all codes and um, it should do it fairly quickly okay so that is it now i gonna turn the key off, start it up, and now we don't have any any warning lights except we're out of gas. So low fuel, and that uh, is pretty much it. Um, all codes cleared, everything is good. Uh, let's drive it around the parking lot and make sure. Uh, steering st steers fine so uh, let's uh, drive it around and see see what happens well there you have it guys uh, mdps replacement on a 2024 kia uh, sportage and there she is brand new no more stop sale so now she can be sold and it really is a nice little SUV um, crossover whatever you want to call it I don't know um, it's not a car it ain't a truck um, I guess it's an SUV um, anyway as always uh, thanks for watching uh, don't forget to like and subscribe comment down below say something say hey hi uh, how's it going? Uh, how you doing? Um, don't forget to check out uh, Shop From a Garage on Facebook. And uh, I know I haven't been posting a whole lot of stuff there. And I'm going to try and just start filling that up with just stuff. Stuff and things. Um, so uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. And I will see you in the next one.